Kent Beck here. I came across an example of uh, Making Making last week, and I wanted to share it. In the Making Making Manifesto, I wrote that engineers are responsible for the things they create, but they're also responsible for the process that they use to make those things. And that's what making making is. Some percentage of our time should be spent on the processes that we use. The central feature of the processes we use is a feedback loop. Feedback loops are valuable because we make mistakes. If we didn't make mistakes, if we didn't learn things, if we didn't change and, and grow, then we wouldn't need feedback loops. You just do it right the first time. But since doing it right the first time isn't an option, we have to have feedback loops. And feedback loops are valuable when they're short. Sometimes building a really short feedback loop is a lot of work. But it's still worth thinking about how to make a really short feedback loop. And here's a feedback loop that I created uh, when I wanted to learn CoffeeScript. And this is just kind of a habit of, of thinking. When I wanted to learn CoffeeScript, I didn't think, what CoffeeScript should I write? I thought, how am I going to get rapid feedback from the CoffeeScript that I do write? And here's what I came up with. So uh, CoffeeScript uh, shares with the JavaScript the fact that... Uh, Files are uh, self-evaluated. Lots of languages are this way. Other way languages aren't. But if they are, you can use that. So here I've got my first little piece of coffee script. Uh, and I can say, I can execute it, and it prints out if everything's okay. If there's a problem, up before this, then... I get an error. Oops. Well, I, I even had an error trying to make an error. Anyway, so uh, so that's that's thing one. You got these self-evaluating files, and the th if the last thing that uh, is evaluated prints out some, hey, everything's okay, then then, then that's uh, that's one half of this feedback loop. The second half of the feedback loop is the fact that CoffeeScript has this beautiful dash dash watch option so here I have uh, it evaluate reevaluates the file every time it's saved so there I have an error I get rid of it I save it and I get success and this is honestly one of the shortest sweetest feedback cycles I've ever had in an IDE it's so ridiculously fast that I had to change my habits. I had to, and I'm, I'm somebody who likes really short feedback cycles and have tried to, to, hard to create them and work within them my whole career. But this is honestly just really ridiculously fast, and that changed my programming workflow. So I'm just going to, and the cool thing is, it was just putting together two pieces of knowledge, this uh, self-evaluating files and the watch option, and all of a sudden I have an IDE that gives me feedback faster than most IDEs I've ever, ever used. So I'm going to uh, do my usual example program, building a testing framework, because building testing frameworks forces you to use Hmm, functions and exceptions and uh, iteration. And uh, just see how this the feedback plays, th this extremely tight feedback loop plays into that. So uh, first thing I need is an assert function. That's not going to work because I haven't even declared it yet. And it uh, doesn't seem to be built into CoffeeScript. I'm a CoffeeScript noob. So if you've got uh, comments on my CoffeeScript, uh, please do let me know. So this takes a uh, flag, and it's a function, and that's all I need to get this to pass. Cool. Uh, the second use case for assert, though, is uh, what happens when I assert false. So I want this to fail, and it succeeds. So that's not good. So uh, I surround this with a try catch. 
and uh, set a flag if uh, something's thrown. So I need to initialize that. And then down here, I need to say throw new error if not thrown. So if that doesn't throw an exception, then I'm going to throw an exception. Eh. Self-testing testing frameworks is, often has this kind of self-referential quality, which is what makes it an interesting intellectual challenge. But anyway, this should now fail because I don't have an implementation here. And this actually looks uh, similar to if not, if not, flag. There we go. And now it'll pass. Bink. Okay, cool. So now I've got an assertion. And now I want to be able to run an, uh, a test. And uh, the result, uh, result of running a test will count how many tests have run. No. Uh, run count. There we go. It'll count the number of tests is run. And this should be uh, one. And then working backwards. Thank you, Jim Newkirk. I need to say uh, the result is I have to have some entry point to my tester. So uh, I'm going to call this a CS unit. I know CS unit's taken, but anyway, I'll, this is not going to live very long. The entry point will be this class CS unit run and uh, the representation for a test. Now, if this was Java, we'd represent a test as an object. But in JavaScript slash CopyScript, Functions and objects blur together. So I'm going to see if I can get away with just representing a test as a function. And if I have to make it into a full-blown object later on, then we'll do that. Okay, so this will fail because I haven't created this class. Yes, unit. Bad me. Now I have the class I should get a new error message because I don't have a method named run. So I need to call it run with an at sign because reasons. And uh, this takes a test as a parameter, and it's a function. And this will still fail. Uh, but I can fake the implementation. And uh, now I'll get a new error. Uh, let's see. Boolean is not a function. Now what's my, what's my mistake here? What if run count is 1? Run count. There we go. Now it's success. Boolean is not a function. Anyway, okay. Um, okay, so now I have this fake implementation, and I want to have a... Oh, I see what the problem is right here. Yeah, now I wish I had an, a test that failed because of that. But anyway, okay. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm, um, yeah. So uh, the result of running a test is uh, this object. And because assignment is a uh, expression as God intended, I only have to do that. Everything still works. Now, if I return that result, now I can initialize it to zero. Result.run count plus plus and everything will still work. And now I can actually run the test, and everything will still work. Cool. So this is kind of the code that I knew I was shooting for when I did this. All right, next one. Uh, result. I need to have a test that fails. So csunit.run is a function that says throw. I almost made that mistake again. Ha, ah, but I didn't. And assert, uh, result.run count is one. Assert, uh, result.fail count is one. Now, this would take me a couple of steps to get this to pass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, comment that out just for a second. Result.fail count is zero. This will fail. And if I initialize this, fail count colon zero, I get success. And now making this pass is 
is one step away. I need to surround this, well, kind of. I need to surround this with a try catch, so if a test fails, it's okay. And result.fail count gets incremented if the test throws an exception for some reason. Now we're going to have success again. Cool. Okay, next up, uh, I want to uh, run a couple of tests. So run count is two, which is going to require me uh, csunit dot run now. If what's the API for running more than one test? Do I overload uh, run to take a single test or an array with a some kind of a type of up here? No, of course not. That would be horrible. I don't like APIs like that. So I'm going to say uh, run all, and this is going to take uh, some tests. Now I thought using CoffeeScript that I could just do this. Here I got two functions, but syntactically there's something wrong with that. So I'm going to extract out my uh, my no-op here as a uh, variable. No-op is a function, so I'm going to just run the same test twice. And now it, this will still fail because I don't have my method. And here I want a run all, and this is tests. And that's a function. And uh, again, I'm going to have a fake implementation just for the moment, and this will pass. Now, what I want to do for an implementation here, the real implementation, is I want to allocate this result object. And then I want to iterate over the tests and call this much of the run function for each of the tests. So to do that, I need to extract this out as a helper method. So I can call it run t test, and that's a test. And uh, it takes a it's a function, and it looks like this. And I'm also going to have to take the result as a parameter. Whoops! How did that happen? Silly test ed text editor. Okay, so I have a test and a result, and I can just check the syntax and works just fine. And then I can replace this with a call to csunit dot te run test test comma result and everything should work. Yes, I successfully extracted that. Now the implementation here becomes uh, result equals run count of zero and. Uh, Yes, unit dot run test test comma result for test in tests. That does our loop, and then we return the result. And now we should still get a success. Excellent. Okay. So next up, I want to run a uh, uh, one test that works and one that fails. So I'm gonna the assertion is result dot run count is to to make sure that both tests run and uh, fail count is one and one of them fails so uh, oops is a function that says throw new array error Puh. poof rented lips today and result equals cs unit dot run all oops and no op okay and here we go now oops missing assignment there we go now i still get an error and i've been through this enough times to know that my error here is that i had a coupling between this line five and the line nine and i haven't expressed it correctly so this is the problem and now i'll get pass Okay, so that's all of the testing framework that I'm going to build now. The bones are in place. Uh, we have some self-tests. And here you can see we ran tests often, a couple of times a minute at least. Because tests are so instantaneous, I found myself uh, discovering 
even smaller slices than I'm used to for running the tests. Now, I have some uh, duplication here, and the end of every coding session is going to be some cleanup. So the duplication between these two methods bugs me, so I'm just going to uh, run all. I'm just going to fix that. Wrap the test in an array. Everything should work. And then the other thing that bugs me here is that this is a static method. And I always, if I have any significant logic in statics, I need to put them in instance methods someplace, but I don't know an instance of what. Now, again, if we were in Java, there's a result class that's a separate class. Here, because this is JavaScript um, and we're just getting going, I'm going to make instances of CS unit act as test results. So uh, it'll they'll have a run count and a fail count. Now this is a little bit ugly. It's a pun, right? A CS unit is both a facade on the class side and instances of it act as result objects. So yeah, it may not stay this way f forever. I mean, if we added some more functionality, we might find reasons to do it. But I don't find any compelling reason to create a new class yet. Okay, so that should be fine. Um, and here, took that a little while. Here, now, I can, I have this object, but I can use a uh, instance of CS unit as a, uh, uh, instead as a replacement. Okay. Now, given that, I can... I want this to be an instance method. So I'm going to make a copy, make this an instance method, so that should be fine. And here, now, I can call a run test on result instead of calling it on the class, and everything should work fine. Cool. Now they're, now this is dead code. And I'm guaranteed that, that this value of this parameter and the value of this when I'm executing here are the same. So I can replace that because flow analysis. And I can replace that one. And then I don't need this parameter. And because of the joys of JavaScript, this is still going to run. Even though this is called with two parameters and this only declares one. Woohoo! I can get rid of that. And uh, there. There. Now I have a testing framework, a one class, three method testing framework that's already useful. Um, but again, the point of this exercise isn't this particular testing framework or how cool CoffeeScript is, which it is. It's that li that moment before saying, I want to learn CoffeeScript. What CoffeeScript do I write? I say, I want to learn CoffeeScript. How can I create a really tight feedback loop? And because of uh, some... Because of these two interesting facts, the watch option and the self-evaluating source code, I can put those together to create a really, really simple uh, but extremely fast feedback loop that's so tight that it lets me uh, 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 lets me program in any even tighter slices than I'm used to. So the next time you're in a situation you think, oh, I need to build something, just take that second to say, hmm, is there a way to get really fast feedback about that thing that I'm building? Maybe there is and maybe there isn't. But if there is, the payoff is just huge. Thanks a lot. Happy coding. Bye-bye.